the cowboy at church collected by john lomax read for LibriVox.org by nemo the cowboy at church some time ago two weeks or more if i remember well i found myself in town and thought i'd knock around a spell when all at once i heard the bell i didn't know twas sunday for on the plains we scarcely know a sunday from a monday a calling all the people from the highways and the hedges and all the reckless throng that tread ruin's ragged edges to come and hear the pastor tell salvation's touching story and how the new road misses hell and leads you straight to glory i started by the chapel door but something urged me in and told me not to spend god's day in revelry and sin i don't go much on sentiment but tears came in my eyes it seemed just like my mother's voice was speaking from the skies i thought how often she had gone with little sis and me to church when i was but a lad way back in tennessee it never once occurred to me about not being dressed in sunday rig but carelessly i went in with the rest you should have seen the smiles and shrugs as i went walking in as though they thought my leggings worse than any kind of sin although the honest parson in his vestry garb arrayed was dressed the same as i was in the trappings of his trade the good man prayed for all the world and all its motley crew for pagan hindu sinners turk and unbelieving jew though the congregation doubtless thought that the cowboys as a race were a kind of moral outlaw with no good claim to grace it is very strange the cowboys are a rough and reckless crew when their garb forbids their doing right as christian people do that they frequent scenes of revelry where death is bought and sold where at least they get a welcome though it's prompted by their gold stranger did it ever strike you when the winter days are gone and the mortal grass is springing up to meet the judgment sun and we tend mighty roundups where according to the word the angel cowboy of the lord will cut the human herd that a heap of stocks that lowing now around the master's pen and feeding at his father's stack will have the brand picked then and brands that when the hair was long looked like the letter c will prove to be the devil's and the brand the letter d while many a long-horned coaster i mean just so to speak that hasn't had the advantage of the range in gospel creek will get to crop the grasses in the pasture of the lord if the letter c showed up beneath the devil's checkerboard end a poem this recording is in the public domain the u s a recruit collected by john lomax read for librivox dot org by larry wilson now list to my song it will not take me long and in some things with me you'll agree a young man so green came in from moline and enlisted a soldier to be he had lots of pluck on himself he was stuck in his government straits he looked boss and he chewed enough beans for a hoss he was a rookie so fluky he was a jim dandy you all agree he said without fear before i'm a year in the army great changes you'll see he was a stone thrower a foam blower he was a lulu you bet he stood on his head and these words gently said i'll be second george washington yet at his post he did land they took him in hand the old bucks they all gathered round saying give us your fist where did you enlist you'll take on again i'll be bound i've a blanket to sell it will fit you quite well i'll sell you the whole or a piece i've a dress coat to trade or a helmet unmade it will do you for kitchen police then the top said my son here is a gun just heel ball that musket up bright in a few days or more you'll be rolling in gore a chasing wild goo goos to fight they'll be fighting you see and blood flowing free we'll send you right on to the front 
and never you fear if you're wounded my dear you'll be pensioned eight dollars per month he was worried so bad he blew in all he had he went on a drunk with good will and the top did report one private short and when he showed up he went to the mill the proceedings we find were a ten dollar blind ten dollars less to blow foam this was long years ago and this rookie you know is now in the old soldier's home end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Cowgirl, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org, by Betty B. The Cowgirl My love is a rider, and broncos he breaks, but he's given up riding, and all for my sake, for he found him a horse, and it suited him so, he vowed he'd ne'er ride any other bronco. My love has a gun, and that gun he can use, but he's quit his gun fighting, as well as his booze and he sold him his saddle his spurs and his rope and there's no more cow punching and that's what i hope my love has a gun that has gone to the bad which makes poor old jimmy feel pretty damn sad for the gun it shoots high and the gun it shoots low and it wobbles about like a bucking bronco the cook is an unfortunate son of a gun he has to be up ere the rise of the sun his language is awful his curses are deep he is like cascarettes, for he works while you sleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Shanty Boy, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. I am a jolly shanty boy, as soon you will discover. To all the dodges I am fly a hustling pine woods rover a peavy hook it is my pride an axe i well can handle to fell a tree or punch a bull get rattling danny randall bung your eye bung your eye i love a girl in saginaw she lives with her mother i defy all michigan to find such another she's tall and fat her hair is red her face is plump and pretty she's my daisy sunday best day girl and her front name stands for kitty bung your eye bung your eye i took her to a dance one night a mossback gave the bidding silver jack bossed the shebang and big dan played the fiddle we danced and drank the livelong night with fights between the dancing till silver jack cleaned out the ranch and sent the mossbacks prancing bung your eye bung your eye end of poem this recording is in the public domain root hog or die collected by john lomax read for LibriVox.org by michael monat root hog or die when i was a young man i lived on the square i never had any pocket change and i hardly thought it fair so out on the crosses i went to rob and to steal and when i met a peddler ho oh, how happy i did feel one morning one morning one morning in may i seen a man a-coming a little bit far away i seen a man a-coming come riding up to me come here come here young fellow i'm after you to-day he taken me to the new jail he taken me to the new jail and i had to walk right in there all my friends went back on me and also my kin i had an old rich uncle who lived in the west he heard of my misfortune it wouldn't let him rest he came to see me he paid my bills and score i have been a bad boy I'll do so no more. There's Minnie and Alice and Lucy likewise. They heard of my misfortune, brought tears to their eyes. I've told them my condition. I've told it o'er and o'er. So I've been a bad boy. I'll do so no more. I will go to East Texas to marry me a wife and try to maintain her the balance of my life. 
I'll try to maintain. I'll lay it up in store. I've been a bad boy. I'll do so no more. Young man, you robber, you had better take it fair. Leave off your marshal killing and live it on the square. Should you meet the marshal, just pass him by and travel on the muscular for its root, hog, or die. When I drew my money, I drew it all in cash, and off to see my Susan, you bet I cut a dash. I spent my money freely and went it on a bum, and I love the pretty women and am bound to have my fun. I used to have a white hat, a horse and buggy fine, courted a pretty girl and always called her mine. But all my courtships proved to be in vain, for they sent me down to Huntsville to wear the ball and chain. Along came my true love about twelve o'clock, saying, Henry, oh Henry, what sentence have you got? The jury found me guilty. The judge would allow no stay. So they sent me down to Huntsville to wear my life away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sweet Betsy from Pike, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Sweet Betsy from Pike, a California immigrant song of the fifties. Oh, don't you remember Sweet Betsy from Pike, who crossed the big mountains with her lover Ike, and two yoke of cattle a large yellow dog a tall shanghai rooster and one spotted dog saying good-bye pike county farewell for a while we'll come back again when we've panned out our pile one evening quite early they camped on the plat twas near by the road on a green shady flat where betsy quite tired lay down to repose while with wonder i gazed on his pike county rose they soon reached the desert where betsy gave out and down in the sand she lay rolling about while ike in great terror looked on in surprise saying betsy get up you'll get sand in your eyes saying good-bye pack county farewell for a while i'd go back to-night if it was but a mile sweet betsy got up in a great deal of pain and declared she'd go back to pike county again then ike heaved a sigh and they fondly embraced and she travelled along with his arm around her waist the wagon tipped over with a terrible crash and out on the prairie rolled all sorts of trash a few little baby clothes done up with care looked rather suspicious though twas all on the square the shanghai ran off and the cattle all died the last piece of bacon that morning was fried poor ike got discouraged and betsy got mad the dog wagged his tail and looked wonderfully sad one morning they climbed up a very high hill and with wonder looked down into old placerville ike shouted and said as he cast his eyes down sweet betsy my darling we've got to hang town long ike and sweet betsy attended a dance where ike wore a pair of his pike county pants sweet betsy was covered with ribbons and rings quoth ike you're an angel but where are your wings a miner said betsy will you dance with me i will that old hoss if you don't make too free but don't dance me hard do you want to know why dog on ye i'm chock full of strong alkali long ike and sweet betsy got married of course but ike getting jealous obtained a divorce and betsy well satisfied said with a shout good-bye you big lummox i'm glad you backed out saying good-bye dear isaac farewell for a while but come back in time to replenish my pile end of poem this recording is in the public domain the disheartened ranger collected by john lomax read for librivox dot org by cindy tully tulsa oklahoma the disheartened ranger come listen to a ranger you kind-hearted stranger this song though a sad one you're welcome to hear we've kept the comanches away from your ranches and followed them far o'er the texas frontier we're weary of scouting of traveling and routing the bloodthirsty villains o'er prairie and wood 
no rest for the sinner no breakfast or dinner but he lies in a supperless bed in the mud no corn nor potatoes no bread nor tomatoes but jerked beef as dry as the sole of your shoe all day without drinking all night without winking i'll tell you kind stranger this never will do those great alligators the state legislators are puffing and blowing two-thirds of their time but windy orations about rangers and rations never put in our pockets one-tenth of a dime they do not regard us they will not reward us though hungry and haggard with holes in our coats but the election is coming and they will be drumming and praising our valor to purchase our votes for glory and payment for victuals and raiment no longer will fight on the texas frontier so guard your own ranches and mind the comanches or surely they'll scalp you in less than a year though sore it may grieve you the rangers must leave you exposed to the arrows and knife of the foe so herd your own cattle and fight your own battle for home to the states i'm determined to go where churches have steeples and laws are more equal where houses have people and ladies are kind where work is regarded and worth is rewarded where pumpkins are plenty and pockets are lined your wives and your daughters we have guarded from slaughter through conflicts and struggles i shudder to tell no more will defend them to god will commend them to the frontier of texas we bid a farewell end of poem this recording is in the public domain recording by cindy tully tulsa oklahoma The Melancholy Cowboy, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Melancholy Cowboy Come all you melancholy folks and listen on to me. I will sing you about the cowboy whose heart so light and free. He roves all over the prairie, and at night when he lays down, his heart's as gay as the flowers of May, with his bed spread on the ground. They are a little bit rough, I must confess, the most of them at least, but as long as you do not cross their trail, you can live with them in peace. But if you do, they're sure to rule the day you come to their land, for they'll follow you up and shoot it out, they'll do it man to man. You can go to a cowboy hungry, go to him wet or dry, and ask him for a few dollars and change, and he will not deny. He will pull out his pocketbook and hand you out a note oh they are the fellows to strike boys whenever you are broke you can go to their ranches and often stay for weeks and when you go to leave boys they'll never charge you a cent but when they go to town boys you bet their money is spent they walk right up they take their drinks and they pay for every one they never ask your pardon boys for a thing that they have done they go to the ballroom and swing the pretty girls around they ride their bucking broncos and wear their broad brim hats their california saddles their pants below their boots you can hear their spurs go jingling or perhaps somebody shoots come all you soft and tender feet if you want to have some fun come go among the cowboys and they'll show you how it's done but take the kind advice of me as i gave it to you before for if you don't they'll order you off with an old Colt's forty four. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bob Stanford. Collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Michael Monat. Bob Stanford. Bob Stanford, he's a Texas boy. He lives down on the flat. His trade is running a well drill, but he's none the worse for that. He's neither rich nor handsome, but unlike the city dude, his manners they are pleasant instead of flip and rude. 
His people live in Texas, and that is his native home, but like many other western lads, he's drifted off from home. He came out to New Mexico, a fortune for to make. He punched the bottom out of the earth and never made a stake. So he came to Arizona and again set up his drill to punch a hole for water, and he's punching at it still. He says he is determined to make the business stick or spend that dern old well machine and all he can get on tick. I hope he is successful, and I'll help him if I can, for I admire pluck and ambition in an honest working man. So keep on going down, punch the bottom out, or try. There is nothing in a hole in the ground that continues being dry. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Charlie Rutledge, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Michael Monat. Charlie Rutledge Another good cowpuncher has gone to meet his fate. I hope he'll find a resting place within the Golden Gate. Another place is vacant on the ranch of the XIT. It will be hard to find another that's liked as well as he. The first that died was Kid White, a man both tough and brave, while Charlie Rutledge makes the third to be sent to his grave. Caused by a cow horse falling while running after stock, t'was on the spring roundup, a place where death men mock. He went forward one morning on a circle through the hills. He was gay and full of glee and free from earthly ills. But when it came to finish up the work on which he went, nothing came back from him, for his time on earth was spent. T'was as he rode the roundup, an XIT turned back to the herd. Poor Charlie shoved him in again, his cutting horse he spurred. Another turned, at that moment, his horse the creature spied, and turned and fell with him, and beneath, poor Charlie died. His relations in Texas, his face never more will see. But I hope he will meet his loved ones beyond in eternity. I hope he will meet his parents, will meet them face to face, and that they will grasp him by the right hand at the shining throne of grace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Range Riders, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org, by Chris Pyle. Come, all you range riders, and listen to me. I will relate you a story of the saddest degree. I will relate you a story of the deepest distress. I love my poor Lulu boys, of all girls the best. When you were out riding boys upon the highway, meet a fair damsel, a lady so gay. With her red rosy cheeks and her sparkling dark eyes, Just think of my Lulu boys, and your bosoms will rise. While you live single, boys, you are just in your prime. You have no wife to scold, you have nothing to bother your minds. You can roam this world over and do just as you will. Hug and kiss the pretty girls and be your own still. But when you get married, boys, you are done with this life. You have sold your sweet comfort for to gain you a wife. Your wife, she will scold you, and the children will cry. It will make those fair faces look withered and dry. You can scarcely step aside, boys, to speak to a friend. But your wife is at your elbows, saying, What do you mean? With her nose turned upon you, it will look like sad news. I advise you by experience at life to refuse. Come fill your bottles, boys, drink bourbon around. Here is luck to the single wherever they are found. Here is luck to the single, and I wish them success. Likewise to the married ones, I wish them no less. I have one more request to make, boys, before we part. Never place your affection on a charming sweetheart. She is dancing before you, your affections to gain. Just turn your back on them with scorn and disdain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Her 
white bosom bear collected by john lomax and read for LibriVox.org by kurt from tucson arizona the sun had gone down o'er the hills of the west and the last beams had faded o'er the mossy hills crest o'er the beauties of nature and the charms of the fair and amanda was bound with her white bosom bare at the foot of the mountain amanda did sigh at the hoot of an owl or the catamount's cry or the howl of some wolf in its low granite cell or the crash of some large forest tree as it fell amanda was there all friendless and forlorn with her face bathed in blood and her garments all torn the sunlight had faded o'er the hills of the green and fierce was the look of the wild savage scene for it was out in the forest where the wild game springs where low in the branches the rude hammock swings the campfire was kindled well fanned by the breeze and the light of the campfire shone round on the trees the campfire was kindled well fanned by the breeze and the light of the fire shone round on the trees and grim stood the circle of the warrior throng impatient to join in the war dance and song the campfire was kindled each warrior was there and amanda was bound with her white bosom bare she counted the vengeance in the face of her foes and sighed for the moment when her sufferings might close young albin he gazed on the face of the fair while her dark hazel eyes were uplifted in prayer and her dark waving tresses in ringlets did flow which hid from the gazer a bosom of snow then young albin the chief of the warriors drew near with an eye like an eagle and a step like a deer forbear cried he your torture forbear this maiden shall live by my wampum i swear it is for this maiden's freedom that i do crave give a sigh for her suffering or a tear for her grave if there is a victim to be burned at that tree young albin your leader that victim shall be then quick to the arms of amanda he rushed the rebel was dead and the tumult was hushed and grim stood the circle of warriors around while the cords of amanda young albin unbound so it was early next morning the red white and blue went gliding o'er the waters in a small birch canoe just like the white swan that glides o'er the tide young albin and amanda o'er the waters did ride o'er the blue bubbling water neath the evergreen trees young albin and amanda did ride at their ease and great was the joy when she stepped on the shore to embrace her dear father and mother once more young albin he stood and enjoyed their embrace with a sigh in his heart and a tear on his face and all that he asked was kindness and food from the parents of amanda to the chief of the woods young amanda is home now as you all know enjoying the friends of her own native shore never more will she roam o'er the hills or the plains she praises the chief that loosened her chains. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Juan Murray, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Chris Pyle. My name is Juan Murray, and hard for my fate, I was born and raised in Texas, that grand old Lone Star State. I have been to many a roundup, boys, have worked on the trail, have stood many a long old guard through the rain, yes, sleet and hail. I have rode the Texas Broncos that pitched from morning till noon, and have seen many a storm, boys, between sunrise, yes, and noon. I am a jolly cowboy and have roamed all over the West, and among the Bronco riders I rank among the best. But when I left old Midland, with voice right, then I spoke, I never will see you again until the day I croak. But since I left old Texas, so many sights I have saw, a traveling from my native state, way out to Mexico. I am looking all around me and cannot help but smile to see my nearest neighbors all in the Mexican style. I left my home in Texas to dodge the ball and chain. 
in the state of sonora i will forever remain farewell to my mother my friends that are so dear i would like to see you all again my lonesome heart to cheer i have a word to speak boys only another to say don't never be a cow thief don't never ride astray be careful of your line boys and keep it on your tree just suit yourself about it for it is nothing to me but if you start to rustling you will come to some sad fate you will have to go to prison and work for the state don't think that i am lying and trying to tell a joke for the writer has experienced just every word he spoke it is better to be honest and let others stock alone than to leave your native country and seek a mexican home for if you start to rustling you will surely come to see the state of sonora be an outcast just like me end of poem this recording is in the public domain greer county collected by john lomax read for LibriVox.org by cindy tully tulsa oklahoma greer county tom height is my name an old bachelor i am you'll find me out west in the country of fame you'll find me out west on an elegant plain and starving to death on my government claim hurrah for greer county the land of the free the land of the bedbug grasshopper and flea i'll sing of its praises and tell of its fame while starving to death on my government claim my house is built of natural sod its walls are erected according to hod its roof has no pitch but is level and plain i always get wet if it happens to rain how happy am i on my government claim i've nothing to lose and nothing to gain i've nothing to eat i've nothing to wear from nothing to nothing is the hardest fare how happy am i when i crawl into bed a rattlesnake hisses a tune at my head a gay little centipede all without fear crawls over my pillow and into my ear now all you claim holders i hope you will stay and chew your hard tack till you're toothless and gray but for myself i'll no longer remain to starve like a dog on my government claim my clothes are all ragged as my language is rough my bread is corn dodgers both solid and tough but yet i am happy and live at my ease on sorghum molasses bacon and cheese Goodbye to Greer County where blizzards arise, where the sun never sinks and a flea never dies, and the wind never ceases but always remains till it starves us all out on our government claims. Farewell to Greer County, farewell to the West. I'll travel back east to the girl I love best. I'll travel back to Texas and marry me a wife and quit corn bread for the rest of my life end of poem this recording is in the public domain recording by cindy tully tulsa oklahoma rosin the bow Collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. I live for the good of my nation, and my sons are all growing low. But I hope that my next generation will resemble old Rosin the Bow. I have traveled this wide world all over, and now to another I'll go. For I know that good quarters are waiting to welcome old Rosin the Bow. The gay round of delights I have traveled, 
nor will I behind leave a woe. For while my companions are jovial, they'll drink to old Rosin the bow. This life now is drawn to a closing. All will at last be so. Then we'll take a full bumper at parting to the name of old Rosin the bow. When I am laid out on the counter, and the people all anxious to know, just raise up the lid of the coffin and look at old Rosin the bow. And when through the streets my friends bear me, and the ladies are filled with deep woe, they'll come to the doors and the windows, and sigh for old Rosin the bow. Then get some fine jovial fellows, and let them all staggering go. Then dig a deep hole in the meadow, and in it toss Rosin the bow. Then get a couple of dornicks, place one at my head and my toe, and do not forget to scratch on them here lies old rosin the bow then let those same jovial fellows surround my lone grave in a row while they drink from my favorite bottle the health of old rosin the bow end of poem this recording is in the public domain the great roundup Collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. When I think of the last great roundup on the eve of eternity's dawn, I think of the past of the cowboys who have been with us here and are gone. And I wonder if any will greet me on the sands of the evergreen shore with a hearty, God bless you, old fellow, that I've met with so often before. I think of the big-hearted fellows who will divide with you a blanket and bread, with a piece of stray beef well roasted, and charge for it never a red. I often look upward and wonder if the green fields will seem half so fair, if any the wrong trail have taken and fail to be in over there. For the trail that leads down to perdition is paved all the way with good deeds. But in the great round-up of ages, dear boys, this won't answer your needs but the way to the green pastures though narrow leads straight to the home in the sky and jesus will give you the passports to the land of the sweet by and by for the saviour has taken to the contract to deliver all those who believe at the headquarters ranch of his father in the great range where none can deceive the inspector will stand at the gateway and the herd one by one will go by the round-up by the angels in judgment must pass neath his all-seeing eye. No maverick or slick will be tallied in the great book of life in his home. For he knows all the brands and the earmarks that down through the ages have come. But along with the tailings and sleepers, the strays must turn from the gate. No road brand to gain them admission, but the awful sad cry, Too late! Yet I trust in the last great round-up that the rider shall cut the big herd, that the cowboy shall be represented in the earmark and brand of the Lord, to be shipped to the bright mystic regions over there in green pastures to lie, and led by the crystal still waters in the home of the sweet by and by. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Jolly Cowboy, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Yan Yan Zen. My lover, he's a cowboy. He's brave and kind and true. He rides a Spanish pony. He throws a lasso too. And when he comes to see me, our vows we do redeem. He throws his arms around me, and thus begins to sing. Ho, oh, I'm a jolly cowboy from texas now i hail give me my quirt and pony i'm ready for the trail i love the rolling prairies they are free from care and strife behind the herd of longhorns i journey all my life when early dawn is breaking and we are far away we fall into our saddles we round up all the day we rope we brand we earmark I tell you, we are smart. And when the herd is ready, 
for Kansas then we start. Oh, I'm a Texas cowboy, light-hearted, brave, and free. To roam the wide, wide prairie, tis always joy to me. My trusty little pony is my companion true. Over creeks and hills and rivers, he's sure to pull me through. When threatening clouds do gather, and herded lightnings flash, and heavy raindrops splatter, and rolling thunders crash, what keeps the herd from running, stampeding far and wide? The cowboy's long, low whistle, and singing by their side. When in Kansas City, our boss he pays us up. We loaf around the city. And take a parting cup. We bid farewell to city life. From noisy crowds we come, and back to dear old Texas, the cowboy's native home. Oh, he's coming back to Mary, the only girl he loves. He says I am his darling. I am his own true love. Some day we two will marry, and then no more he'll roam. But settle down with Mary in a cozy little home. Ho! I'm a jolly cowboy from Texas. Now I hail. Give me my bond to Mary. I'll quit the Lone Star Trail. I love the rolling prairies. They're free from care and strife. But I'll quit the herd of Longhorns for the sake of my little wife. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Convict, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. When slumbering in my convict cell, my childhood days I see, when I was mother's little child and knelt at mother's knee. There my life was peace, I know, I knew no sorrow or pain. Mother dear, never did think, I know, I would wear a felon's chain. Clink, 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 clink. Ah, uh, don't you hear the clinking of my chain? Clink, 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 clink. Ah, uh, don't you hear the clinking of my chain? When I had grown to manhood and evil paths I tried, I learned to scorn my fellow man and even curse my God. And in the evil course I ran for a great length of time, till at last I ran too long and was condemned for a felon's crime. My prison life will soon be o'er, my life will soon be gone. May the angels wafted heavenward to a bright and happy home. I'll be at rest, sweet rest, there is rest in the heavenly home. I'll be at rest, sweet, sweet rest, there is rest in the heavenly home. Clink, 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 clink. Ah, don't you hear the clinking of my chain? Clink, 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 clink. Ah, don't you hear the clinking of my chain? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Jack o' Diamonds, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. O oh, Molly, O oh, Molly, it is for your sake alone that I leave my old parents, my house, and my home. That I leave my old parents, you cause me to roam. I am a rabble soldier, and Dixie is my home. Jack of diamonds, jack of diamonds, I know you of old. You've robbed my poor pockets of silver and gold. Whiskey, you villain, you've been my downfall. You've kicked me, you've cuffed me, but I love you for all. My foot's in my stirrup, my bridle's in my hand. I'm going to leave sweet Molly, the fairest in the land. Her parents don't like me. They say I'm too poor. They say I'm unworthy to enter her door. They say I drink whiskey, my money is my own, and them that don't like me can leave me alone. I'll eat when I'm hungry, I'll drink when I'm dry, and when I get thirsty, I'll lay down and cry. It's beefsteak when I'm hungry, and whiskey when I'm dry. 
greenbacks when I'm hard up, and heaven when I die. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey, I cry. If I don't get rye whiskey, I surely will die. Oh baby, oh baby, I've told you before, do make me a pallet. I lie on the floor. I will build me a big castle on yonder mountain high, where my true love can see me when she comes riding by. Where my true love can see me and help me to mourn, I'm a rabble soldier, and Dixie is my home. I'll get up in my saddle, my quirt I'll take in hand. I'll think of you, Molly, when in some far distant land. I'll think of you, Molly, you caused me to roam. I am a rabble soldier, and Dixie is my home. If the ocean was whiskey, and I was a duck, I'd dive to the bottom to get one sweet sup. But the ocean ain't whiskey, and I ain't a duck, so I'll play Jack of Diamonds, and then we'll get drunk. Oh, baby, oh, baby, I've told you before, do make me a pallet, I'll lie on the floor. I've rambled and trambled this wide world around, but it's for the rabble army, dear Molly, I'm bound. It is to the rabble army, dear Molly, I roam, I am a rabble soldier, and Dixie is my home. I have rambled and gambled all my money away, but it's with the rabble army, O oh Molly, I must stay. It is with the rabble army, O oh Molly, I must roam. I am a rabble soldier, and Dixie is my home. Jack of diamonds, Jack of diamonds, I know you of old. You've robbed my poor pockets of silver and gold. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey, I cry. If you don't give me rye whiskey, I'll lay down and die. Oh, baby, oh, baby, I've told you before. Do make me a pallet. I'll lie on the floor. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Cowboy's Meditation Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo At midnight, when the cattle are sleeping, On my saddle I pillow my head, And up at the heavens lie peeping From out of my cold, grassy bed. Often, and often I wondered at night, When lying alone, If every bright star up yonder Is a big people world like our own. Are they worlds with their ranges and ranches? Do they ring with rough rider refrains? Do the cowboys scrap there with Comanches and other red men of the plains? Are the hills covered over with cattle in those mystic worlds far, far away? Do the ranch houses ring with the prattle of sweet little children at play? At night in the bright stars up yonder do the cowboys lie down to their rest? Do they gaze at this old world and wonder if rough riders dash over its breast. Do they list to the wolves in the canyons? Do they watch the night owl in its flight? With their horse their only companion, while guarding the herd through the night? Sometimes when a bright star is twinkling, like a diamond set in the sky, I find myself lying and thinking, it may be God's heaven is nigh. I wonder if there I shall meet her, my mother whom God took away, if in the star heavens I'll greet her at the roundup that's on the last day. In the east the great daylight is breaking, and into my saddle I spring. The cattle from sleep are awakening, the heaven thoughts for me take wing. Eyes of my bronco are flashing, impatient he pulls at the reins, and off round the herd I go dashing, a reckless cowboy of the plains. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Billy Venero, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. Billy Venero heard them say in an Arizona town one day that a band of Apache Indians were upon the trail of death. Heard them tell of murder done, three men killed at Rocky Run. They're in danger at the cow ranch, said Venero under breath. 
Cow Ranch, forty miles away, was a little place that lay in a deep and shady valley of the mighty wilderness. Half a score of homes were there, and in one a maiden fair held the heart of Billy Venero, Billy Venero's little Bess. So no wonder he grew pale when he heard the cowboy's tale of the men that he'd seen murdered the day before at Rocky Run. Sure as there's a God above, I will save the girl I love. By my love for little Bessie, I will see that something's done. Not a moment he delayed when his brave resolve was made. Why, man, his comrades told him when they heard of his daring plan. You are riding straight to death, but he answered, save your breath. I may never reach the cow branch, but I'll do the best I can. As he crossed the alkali, all his thoughts flew on ahead to the little band at cow ranch, thinking not of danger near. With his quirt's unceasing whirl and the jingle of his spurs, little brown chapel boy the cowboy o'er the faraway frontier. Lower and lower sank the sun, he drew rain at rocky run. Here those men met death, my chapo, and he stroked his glossy mane. So shall those we go to warn, ere the coming of the morn, if we fail, God help my Bessie, and he started on again. Sharp and clear, a rifle shot woke the echoes of the spot. I am wounded, cried Venero, as he swayed from side to side. While there's life, there's always hope. Slowly onward I will lope. If I fail to reach the cow ranch, Bessie Lee shall know I tried. I will save her yet, he cried. Bessie Lee shall know I tried. And for her sake, then he halted in the shadow of a hill. From his chaparreras he took with weak hands a little book, tore a blankly from its pages, saying, This shall be my will. From a limb a penny broke, and he dipped his pen of oak in the warm blood that was spurting from a wound above his heart. Rouse, he wrote before too late, Apache warriors lie in wait. Goodbye, Bess, God bless you, darling, and he felt the cold tears start. Then he made his message fast, love's first message and its last. To the saddle horn he tied it, and his lips were white with pain. Take this message, if not me, straight to little Bessie Lee. Then he tied himself to the saddle, and he gave his horse the rein. Just at dusk a horse of brown, wet with sweat, came panting down. The little lane at the cow ranch stopped in front of Bessie's door. But the cowboy was asleep, and his slumbers were so deep, little Bess could never wake him, though she tried for evermore. You have heard the story told by the young and by the old, away down yonder at the cow ranch, the night the Apaches came, of that sharp and bloody fight, how the chief fell in the fight, and the panic-stricken warriors when they heard Venero's name. And the heavens and earth between keep a little flower so green that little Bess had planted ere they laid her by his side. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dogie Song, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Tim Watkins. The cow bosses are good-hearted chunks, some short, some heavy, more long. But don't matter what he looks like, they all sing the same old song. On the plains, in the mountains, in the valleys, in the south where the days are long, the bosses are different fellows, still they sing the same old song. Sift along, boys, don't ride so slow, haven't got much time but a long round to go. Quirt him in the shoulders and rake him down the hip. I've cut your toppy mounts, boys, now pair off and rip. Bunch the herd at the old meat, then beat em on the tail. Whip em up and down the sides, and hit the shortest trail. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tim Watkins. The Boozer, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. 
I'm a howler from the prairies of the west. If you want to die with terror, look at me. I'm chain lightning. If I ain't, may I be blessed. I'm the snorter of the boundless prairie. He's a killer and a hater. He's the great annihilator. He's a terror of the boundless prairie. I'm the snoozer from the upper trail. I'm the reveler in murder and in gore. I can bust more Pullman coaches on the rail than anyone who's worked the job before. He's a snorter and a snoozer. He's the great trunk line abuser. He's the man who puts the sleeper on the rail. I'm the double-jawed hyena from the east. I'm the blazing bloody blizzard of the states. I'm the celebrated slugger. I'm the beast. I can snatch a man bald-headed while he waits. He's a double-jawed hyena. He's the villain of the Cena. He can snatch a man bald-headed while he waits. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Drinking Song, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. Drink that rot gut, drink that rot gut, drink that red eye boys. It don't make a damn wherever we land, we hit her up for joy. We've lived in the saddle and ridden trail, drink old Jordan boys. We'll go whooping and yelling, we'll all go a helling, drink her to our joy. Whoopee, drink that rot gut, drink that red nose whenever you get to town. Drink it straight and swig it mighty till the world goes round and round. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Fragment Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson I'd rather hear a rattler rattle I'd rather buck stampeding cattle I'd rather go to the greaser battle than, than to, than to fight, than to fight the bloody Indians. I'd rather eat a pan of dope, I'd rather ride without a rope. I'd rather from this country lope than, than to, than to fight, than to fight the bloody Indians. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Man Called Hodge, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Lowell Moore, October twentieth, two 2017, in Lake Helen, Florida. Come all, you old cow punchers, a story I will tell. And if you'll all be quiet, I sure will sing it well. And if you boys don't like it, you sure can go to hell. Back in the day when I was young, I knew a man named Hodge. He wasn't fit for nothing except turning up the clods. But he came west in 53 behind a pair of mules, and t'was hard to tell between the three which was the biggest fools. Up on the plains, old Hodge he got, and there his trouble began. Oh, he sure did get in trouble, and old Hodge wasn't no man. He met a bunch of Indian bucks led by Geronimo, and what them Indians did to him, well, surely I don't know. But they lifted off old Hodge's scalp and left him out to die, and if it hadn't been for me, he'd have been in the sweet by and by. But I packed him back to Santa Fe, and there I found his mules. For them dead blamed two critters had got the Indians fooled. I don't know how they done it, but they sure did get away. And them two mules is living up to this very day. Old Hodgie's feet got toughened up, and he got to be a sport. He opened up a gambling house and a place of low resort. He got the prettiest dancing girls that ever could be found. Them girls' feet was like rubber balls. They never stayed on the ground. And then thar came Billy the Kid. He envied Hodgie's wealth. 
He told old Hodge to leave the town. Twould be better for his health. Old Hodge, he took the hint and got, but he carried all his wealth. And he went back to New York State with lots of dinero. And now they say he's senator. But of that, I sure don't know. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Lowell Moore from Lake Helen, Florida. A fragment collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I am fur from my sweetheart, and she is fur from me. And when I'll see my sweetheart, I can't tell when twill be. But I love her just the same, no matter where I roam, And that there girl will wait for me whenever I come home. I've roamed the Texas prairies, I've followed the cattle trail, I've rid a pitchin' pony till the hair came off his tail. I've been to cowboy dances, I've kissed the Texas girls, But they ain't none that can compare with my own sweetheart's curls. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lone Star Trail, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org. The Lone Star Trail. I'm a rowdy cowboy just off the stormy plains. My trade is girtin' saddles and pullin' bridle reins. Oh, I can tip the lasso. It is with graceful ease. I rope a streak of lightning and ride it where I please. My bosses, they all like me. They say I am hard to beat. I give them the bold standoff. You bet I've got the cheek. I always work for wages. My pay I get in gold. I'm bound to follow the longhorn steer until I am too old. ki yi yip 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 yi I am a Texas cowboy, and I do ride the range. My trade is cinches and saddles and ropes and bridle reins. With Stetson hat and jingling spurs and leather up to the knees, graybacks as big as chili beans and fighting like hell with fleas. And if I had a little stake, I soon would married be. But another week and I must go. The bosses said so today. My girl must cheer up courage and choose some other one, for I am bound to follow the Lone Star Trail until my race is run. Kai ya yip 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 a. It almost breaks my heart for to have to go away and leave my own little darling, my sweetheart, so far away. But when I'm out on the Lone Star Trail, often I'll think of thee. Of my own dear girl and the darling one, the one I would like to see. And when I get to a shipping point, I'll get on a little spree to drive away the sorrow for the girl that once loved me. And though red liquor stirs us up when we're bound to have our fun, I intend to follow the Lone Star Trail until my race is run. Kai ya yip 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 a. I went up the Lone Star Trail in 1883. I fell in love with a pretty little miss, and she in love with me. When you get to Kansas, write and let me know, and if you get in trouble, your bail I'll come and go. When I got up in Kansas, I had a pleasant dream. I dreamed I was down on Trinity, down on that pleasant stream. I dreamt my true love right beside me. She come to go my bail. I woke up broken-hearted with a yearling by the tail. ki ya yip 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 ye In come my jailer, about nine o'clock. A bunch of keys was in his hand, my cell door to unlock, saying, Cheer up, my prisoner. I heard some voice say, You're bound to hear your sentence some time today. In came my mother, about ten o'clock, saying, Oh, my Johnny, what sentence have you got? The jury found me guilty, and the judge is standing by, has sent me down to Huntsville to lock me up and die. ki ya yip 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 a Down come the jailer just about eleven o'clock, with a bunch of keys all in his hand, the cell doors to unlock, saying, Cheer up, my prisoner. I heard the jury say, Just ten long years in Huntsville, you're bound to go and stay. Down come my sweetheart, ten dollars in her hand, saying, Give this to my cowboy, tis all that I command. Oh, give this to my cowboy, and think of olden times. Think of the darling that he has left behind. Kai ya yip 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 yay. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. Way Down in Mexico, collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. Oh, boys, we're going far tonight. Yo ho, yo ho. We'll take the greasers now in hand and drive em in the Rio Grande, way down in Mexico. We'll hang old Santa Anna soon. Yo ho, yo ho. And all the greaser soldiers, too, to the tune of Yankee Doodle Doo, way down in Mexico. We'll scatter em like flocks of sheep. Yo ho, yo ho. We'll mow em down with rifle ball and plant our flag right on their wall, way down in Mexico. Old rough and ready, he's a trump. Yo ho, yo ho. He'll wipe old Santa Anna out and put the greasers all to rout way down in Mexico. Then we'll march back by and by, yo ho, yo ho, and kiss the gals we left to home, and never more we'll go and roam way down in Mexico. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rattlesnake, a ranch haying song. Collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. A nice young Mawawan lived on a hill will will. A nice young Mawawan, for I knew him well, well, well. To my rattle, to my roo raw ree. This nice young Mawawan went out to mo wo wo to see if he wee wee could make a show wo wo. To my rattle, to my roo raw ree. He scarcely mo wo woed half round the fee we wheeled, till up jumped come a rattle come a snay way wake, and bit him on the he we wheel. To my rattle to my roo raw ree, he laid right down we wound upon the grow wow wound and shut his eye wi wise and looked all a row wow wound. To my rattle to my roo raw ree, O pappy da wow wed, go tell my gow wow wow. But I'm going to die, why, why, for I know I shall, wow, wow. To my rattle, to my roo raw ree. O pappy, da, wow, wed, go spread the new woo woos, and here come so, wow, wow, without her shoe woo woos. To my rattle, to my roo raw ree. O John, O jaw, wow, wan, why did you go, wo wo, way down in the me, well, wed, oh, so far to mo, wo wo. To my rattle, to my roo raw ree. O oh, sal, o oh, sal, wow, wow, why don't you know, wo, wo, when the grass gets rye, wi wi, it must be mo, wo, wo. To my rattle, to my roo raw ree. Come all young girl, wo, whirls, and shed a tear, weir, weir, for this young ma, wow, wan, that died right here, weir, weir. To my rattle, to my roo raw ree. Come all young me, wa, wan, and warning te way way, and don't get be we wit by rattle snay way way. To my rattle, to my roo raw ree. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Railroad Corral, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Rick of Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, we're up in the morning, ere breaking of day, the chuck wagon's busy, the flapjacks in play. The herd is astir o'er hillside and vale, with the night riders rounding them into the trail. Oh, come take up your cinches, come shake out your reins, come wake your old bronco and break for the plains. Come roust out your steers from the long chaparral, for the outfit is off to the railroad corral. The sun circles upward, the steers as they plod, are pounding to powder the hot prairie sod. And it seems as the dust makes you dizzy and sick That we'll never reach noon in the cool, shady crick. But tie up your kerchief and ply up your nag. Come dry up your grumbles and try not to lag. Come with your steers from the long chaparral, For we're far on the road to the railroad corral. The afternoon shadows are starting to lean When the chuck wagon sticks in the marshy ravine. The herd scatters farther than vision can look, For you can bet all true punchers will help out the cook. Come shake out your rawhide and snake it up fair. Come break your old bronco to take in his share. Come from your steers in the long chaparral, for tis all in the drive to the railroad corral. But the longest of days must reach evening at last, the hills all climbed, the creeks all passed. 
The tired herd droops in a yellowing light. Let them loaf if they will, for the railroad's in sight. So flap up your holster and snap up your belt, and strap up your saddle whose lap you have felt. Goodbye to the steers from the long chaparral, for there's a town that's a trunk by the railroad corral. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Song of the Matisse Trapper Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma Hurrah for the Great White Way! Hurrah for the dog and sledge! As we snowshoe along, we give them a song With a snap of the whip and an urgent mush on Hurrah for the Great White Way! Hurrah! Hurrah for the snow and the ice! As we follow the trail, we call to the dogs with whistle and song, and reply to their talk with only mush on, mush on. Hurrah for the snow and the ice! Hurrah! Hurrah for the gun and the trap! As we follow the lines by the rays of the mystic light that flames in the north with banners so bright, as we list to its swish, swish, swish through the air all night. Hurrah for the gun and the trap! Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah! Hurrah for the fire and cold, as we lie in the robes all night, and list to the howl of the wolf, for we emptied the pot of the tea so hot, and a king on his throne might envy our lot. Hurrah for the fire and cold! Hurrah! Hurrah for our black-haired girls, who brave the storms of the mountain heights, and follow us on the great white way, for their eyes so bright light the way all right, and guide us to shelter and warmth each night. Hurrah for our black-haired girls! Hurrah! 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 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Campfire Has Gone Out, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Bristol Chilton on November 3rd, 2017. Through progress of the railroads, our occupation's gone, so we will put ideas into words, our words into a song. First comes the cowboy, he is pointed for the west. Of all the pioneers, I claim the cowboys are the best. You will miss him on the roundup, it's gone, his merry shout. The cowboy has left the country, and the campfire has gone out. There is the freighters, our companions, you've got to leave this land. Can't drag your loads for nothing through the gumbo and the sand. The railroads are bound to beat you when you do your level best, so give it up to the grangers and strike out for the west. Bid them all adieu and give the merry shout. The cowboy has left the country, and the campfire has gone out. When I think of those good old days, my eyes with tears do fill. When I think of the tin can by the fire and the coyote on the hill. I'll tell you, boys, in those days, old-timers stood a show. Our pockets full of money, not a sorrow did we know. But things have changed now. We are poorly clothed and fed. Our wagons are all broken, and our ponies most all dead. Soon we will leave this country. You'll hear the angels shout, Oh, here they come to heaven. The campfire has gone out. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Night Herding Song, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org. Night Herding Song, by Harry Stevens. Oh, slow up, dogies, quit your roving around. You have wandered and tramped all over the ground. Oh, graze along, dogies, and feed kind of slow, and don't forever be on the go. Oh, move slow, dogies, move slow. hi -o, hi -o, o o I have circle-herded, trail-herded, night-herded, and cross-herded, too. But to keep you together, that's what I can't do. My horse is leg-weary, and I'm awful tired. But if I let you get away, I'm sure to get fired. Bunch up, little dogies, bunch up. Hi -o, hi -o, o -o. oh say little doggies when you gonna lay down and quit this forever sifting around 
my limbs are weary my seat is sore oh lay down doggies like you've laid before lay down little doggies lay down hi o hi o oh, oh oh lay still doggies since you have laid down stretch away out on the big open ground snore loud little doggies and drown the wild sound that will all go away when the day rolls around lay still little doggies lay still hi o hi o oh oh end of poem this recording is in the public domain Tailpiece, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. Oh, the cowpuncher loves the whistle of his rope as he races over the plains, and the stage driver loves the popper of his whip and the rattle of his conquered chains. And we'll all pray the Lord that we will be saved and will keep the golden rule. But I'd rather be home with the girl I love than to monkey with this goddamn mule. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Habit, collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. I've beat my way wherever any winds have blown. I've bummed along from Portland down to San Antone. From Sandy Hook to Frisco, over Gulch and Hill. For once you get the habit, why you can't keep still i settles down quite frequent and i says says i i'll never wander further till i comes to die but the wind it sort of chuckles why oh of course you will and sure enough i does it cause i can't keep still i've seed a lot o places where i'd like to stay but i gets a feelin restless and i'm on my way i was never meant for sudden on my own door sill and once you get the habit why you can't keep still i've been in richmond's houses and i've been in jail but when it's time for leavin i jest hits the trail i'm a human bird of passage and the song i trill is once you get the habit why you can't keep still the sun is sort of coaxin and the road is clear and the wind is singin ballads that i got to hear it ain't no use to argue when you feel the thrill for once you get the habit why you can't keep still and a poem this recording is in the public domain old paint collected by john lomax read for librivox dot org by cindy tully tulsa oklahoma old paint goodbye old paint i'm a leavin cheyenne goodbye old paint i'm a leavin cheyenne my foot in the stirrup my pony won't stand goodbye old paint i'm a leavin cheyenne i'm a leavin cheyenne i'm off for montan goodbye old paint i'm a leavin cheyenne i'm a ridin old paint i'm a leadin old fan goodbye old paint i'm a leavin cheyenne with my feet in the stirrups my bridle in my hand goodbye old paint i'm a leavin cheyenne old paint's a good pony he paces when he can goodbye little annie i'm off for cheyenne oh hitch up your horses and feed em some hay and seat yourself by me so long as you stay my horses ain't hungry they'll not eat your hay my wagon is loaded and rolling away my foot in my stirrup my reins in my hand good morning young lady my horses won't stand good-bye old paint i'm a leavin cheyenne Goodbye, old paint. I'm a leavin' Cheyenne. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma.
Down South on the Rio Grande, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. From way down south on the Rio Grande, roll on steers for the post oak sand. Way down south in Dixie, oh boys, ho! You'd laugh for to see that fellow a straddle of a Mustang mare on a rawhide saddle. Way down south in Dixie, oh boys, ho! Rich as a king, and he wouldn't be bigger for a pitchin' hoss and a lame old nigger. Way down south in Dixie, oh boys, ho! Old Abe kept gettin' bigger and bigger till he bust his south bout a lame old nigger. Way down south in Dixie, oh boys, ho! Old Jeff swears he'll sew him together with powder and shot instead of leather. Way down south in Dixie, oh boys, ho! can cuss and fight and hold or free em but i know them mavericks when i see em way down south in dixie oh boys ho end of poem this recording is in the public domain silver jack collected by john lomax read for librivox dot org by phil schempf I was on the drive in eighty, working under Silver Jack, which the same is now in Jackson and ain't soon expected back. And there was a fella amongst us by the name of Robert Waite, kind of cute and smart and tonguey, guess he was a graduate. He could talk on any subject from the Bible down to Hoyle, and his words flowed out so easy, just as smooth and slick as oil he was what they call a skeptic and he loved to sit and weave highfalutin words together tellin what he didn't believe one day we were all sittin round a smokin niggerhead tobacco and hearin bob expound hail he said was all a humbug and he made it plain as day that the bible was a fable and we loud it looked that way miracles and such like were too rank for him to stand and as for him they called the savior he was just a common man you're a liar someone shouted and you gotta take it back then everybody started twas the words of silver jack and he cracked his fists together and he stacked his duds and cried twas in that dar religion that my mother lived and died and though i haven't always used the lord exactly right yet when i hear a chump abuse him he's gotta eat his words or fight now this bob he weren't no coward and he answered bold and free stack your duds and cut your capers for there ain't no flies on me and they fit for forty minutes and the crowd would whoop and cheer when jack spit up a tooth or two or when bobby lost an ear but at last jack got him under and he slugged him once or twice and straightway bob admitted the divinity of christ but jack kept reasoning with him till the poor cuss gave a yell and loud he'd been mistaken in his views concerning hell then the fierce encounter ended and they riz up from the ground and someone brought a bottle out and kindly passed it round and we drank to bob's religion in a cheerful sort of way but the spread of infidelity was checked in camp that day End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Cowboy's Christmas Ball Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Cowboy's Christmas Ball Way out in western Texas, where the clear fork's waters flow, Where the cattle are a-browsin' and the Spanish ponies grow, where the northers come a whistlin from beyond the neutral strip and the prairie dogs are sneezin as though they had the grip where the coyotes come a howlin round the ranches after dark and the mockin birds are singin to the lovely meadow lark where the possum and the badger and the rattlesnakes abound and the monstrous stars are winkin o'er a wilderness profound where lonesome tawny prairies melt into airy streams while the double mountains slumber in heavenly kinds of dreams where the antelope is grazin and the lonely plovers call it was there i attended the cowboy's christmas ball the town was anson city old jones's county seat 
where they raise polled angus cattle and waving whiskered wheat where the air is soft and bammy and dry and full of health where the prairies is explodin with agricultural wealth where they print the texas western that heck mccann supplies with news and yarns and stories of most amazing size where frank smith pulls the badger on knowing tender feet and democracy's triumphant and mighty hard to beat where lives that good old hunter john milsap from lamar who used to be the sheriff back east in paris sah twas there i say at anson with the lovely witter wall that i went to that reception the cowboy's christmas ball the boys had left the ranches and come to town in piles the ladies kinder scatterin had gathered in for miles and yet the place was crowded as i remember well twas gave on this occasion at the morning star hotel the music was a fiddle in a lively tambourine and a viol came imported by the stage from abilene the room was togged out gorgeous with mistletoe and shawls and the candles flickered festious around the airy walls the women folks looked lovely the boys looked kinder treed till the leader commenced yelling whoa fellers let's stampede and the music started sighing and a wailing through the hall as a kind of introduction to the cowboy's christmas ball the leader was a feller that came from swenson's ranch they called him windy billy from little deadman's branch his rig was kinder cheerless big spurs and high-heeled boots he had the reputation that comes when fellers shoots his voice was like the bugle upon the mountain height his feet were animated in a mighty moving sight when he commenced to holler now fellers shake your pen lock horns tur all them heifers and rustle them like men salute your lovely critters nyow swing and let em go climb the grapevine round em nyow all hands do see do you maverick jine the round up just skip the waterfall huh hit was gettin active the cowboy's christmas ball the boys was tolerable skittish the ladies powerful neat that old bass viol's music just got there with both feet that wailin frisky fiddle i never shall forget and windy kept a singin i think i hear him yet oh exes chase your squirrels and cut em to our side spur treadwell to the centre with cross p charlie's bride doc hollis down the centre and twine the ladies chain van andrews pen the fillies and big t diamonds train all pull your freight together nyow swallow fork and change big boston lead the trail herd through little pitchfork's range purr round your gentle pussies nyow rope and balance all ha huh, it were gettin active the cowboy's christmas ball the dust riz fast and furious we all just galloped round till the scenery got so giddy that t-bar dick was downed we buckled to our partners and told em to hold on then shook our hoofs like lightning until the early dawn don't tell me about cotillions or germans no siree that whirl at anson city just takes the cake with me i'm sick of lazy shufflins of them i've had my fill give me a frontier breakdown backed up by windy bill mcallister ain't nowhere when windy leads the show i've seen em both in harness and so i ought to know oh bill i shan't forget yer and i oftentimes recall that lively gated soiree the cowboy's christmas ball and a poem this recording is in the public domain pinto collected by john lomax read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson i am a vaquero by trade to handle my rope i'm not afraid i lass an otero by the two horns throw down the biggest that ever was born whoa 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 pinto whoa 
my name to you i will not tell for what's the use you know me so well the girls all love me and cry when i leave them to join the rodeo whoa 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 pinto whoa i am a vaquero and here i reside show me the bronco i cannot ride they say old pinto with one split ear is the hardest jumping bronco on the rodero whoa 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 pinto whoa there strayed to our camp an iron gray colt the boys were all afraid of him so on him i bolt you bet i stayed with him till cheer after cheer he's the bronco twister that's on the rodero whoa 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 pinto whoa my story is ended old pinto is dead i'm going down laredo and paint the town red i'm going up to laredo and set up the beer to all the cowboys that's on the rodero whoa 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 pinto whoa end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Girl I Left Behind Me Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox Org by Wolfgang Boss The Girl I Left Behind Me I struck the trail in 79 The herds ran out behind me As I jog alone, my mind ran back For the girl I left behind me That sweet little girl, that true little girl The girl I left behind me if ever I got off the trail and the Indian they don't find me, I'll make my way straight back again to the girl I left behind me. That sweet little girl, that true little girl, the girl I left behind me. The wind did blow, the rain did flow, the hail did fall and blind me. I thought of the girl, that sweet little girl, the girl I left behind me. That sweet little girl, that true little girl, the girl I left behind me. She rode her head to the place I said, I was always glad to find her. She said, I'm true, when you get through, right back here you will find me. That sweet little girl, that true little girl, the girl I left behind me. When we sold out, I took the train, I knew where I would find her. When I got back, we had a smack, and that was no golden lie. That's where the little girl, that true little girl, the girl I left behind me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Billy the Kid, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Cindy Tully. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Billy the Kid. Billy was a bad man and carried a big gun. He was always after greasers and kept em on the run. He shot one every morning for to make his morning meal. And let a white man sass him, he was sure to feel his steel. He kept folks in hot water and he stole from many a stage and when he was full of liquor he was always in a rage but one day he met a man who was a whole lot badder and now he's dead and we ain't none the sadder end of poem this recording is in the public domain recording by cindy tully tulsa oklahoma The Hellbound Train, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. A Texas cowboy lay down on a barroom floor, having drunk so much he could drink no more. So he fell asleep with a troubled brain, to dream that he rode on a hell-bound train. The engine with murderous blood was damp and was brilliantly lit with a brimstone lamp an imp for fuel was shoveling bones while the furnace rang with a thousand groans the boiler was filled with lager beer 
and the devil himself was the engineer. The passengers were a most motley crew, church member, atheist, Gentile, and Jew. Rich men in broadcloth, beggars in rags, handsome young ladies and withered old hags, yellow and black men, red, brown, and white, all chained together. Oh, God, what a sight! While the train rushed on at an awful pace, the sulphurous fumes scorched their hands and face. Wider and wider the country grew, as faster and faster the engine flew. Louder and louder the thunder crashed, and brighter and brighter the lightning flashed. Hotter and hotter the air became, till the clothes were burnt from each quivering frame. And out of the distance there arose a yell. Ha ha, said the devil, we're nearing hell. Then, oh, how the passengers all shrieked with pain and begged the devil to stop the train. But he capered about and danced for glee and laughed and joked at their misery. My faithful friends, you've done the work and the devil never can a payday shirk. You've bullied the weak, you've robbed the poor, the starving brother you've turned from the door. You've laid up gold where the canker rust and have given free vent to your beastly lust. You've justice scorned and corruption sown and trampled the laws of nature down. You have drunk, rioted, cheated, plundered and lied and mocked at God in your hell-born pride. You have paid full fare, so I'll carry you through, for it's only right you should have your due. Why, the laborer always expects his hire, so I'll land you safe in the lake of fire, where your flesh will waste and the flames that roar, and my imps torment you forevermore. Then the cowboy awoke with an anguished cry, his clothes wet with sweat and his hair standing high. Then he prayed as he never had prayed till that hour to be saved from his sin and the demon's power. And his prayers and his vows were not in vain, for he never rode the hell-bound train. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Scout's Lament Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schampf. Come all of you, my brother scouts, and listen to my song. Come let us sing together, though the shadows fall so long. Of all the old frontiersmen that used to scour the plain, there are but very few of them that with us yet remain. Day after day they're dropping off, they're going one by one. Our clan is fast decreasing, our race is almost run. There are many of our number that never wore the blue, but faithfully they did their part, as brave men tried and true. They never joined the army, but had other work to do, in piloting the coming folks to help them safely through. But, brothers, we are failing, our race is almost run. The days of elk and buffalo and beaver traps are gone. Oh, the days of elk and buffalo, it fills my heart with pain to know these days are past and gone to never come again we fought the redskin rascals over valley hill and plain we fought him in the mountain top we fought him down again these fighting days are over the indian yell resounds no more along the border peace sends far sweeter sounds but we found great joy old comrades to hear and make it die we won bright homes for gentle ones and now our west goodbye end of poem this recording is in the public domain the deserted adobe collected by john lomax read for librivox.org by yen yen zen round the adobe rank sands are thickly blowing its ridges fill the deserted field Yet on this claim young lives once hope was sowing, For all the years might yield, And in strong hands the echoing hoof pursuing. A wooden shear turned up the sod, 
The toiler brave drank deep the fresh air's brewing, and sang content to God. The toiler brave drank deep the fresh air's brewing, and sang content to God. A woman fair and sweet has smiling striven through long and lonesome hours. A blue-eyed babe, a bit of earthly heaven, laughed at the sun's hot towers. A bow of promise made this desert splendid. This adobe was their pride, but what began so well at last has ended. The promise died, but what began so well at last soon ended. The promise died. Their plans and dreams, their cheerful labor wasted, in dry and misspent years. The spring was sweet. The summer bitter tasted, the autumn sought with tears. Now jib and sand do hide their one-time yearning. Twas theirs, tis past. God's ways are strange. We take so long in learning to fail at last. God's ways are strange. We take so long in learning to fail at last. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Cowboy at Work, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Yan Yan Zen. You may call the cowboy horned, and think him hard to tame. You may heap vile epithets upon his head. But to know him is to like him, notwithstanding his hard name, for he will divide with you his beef and bread. If you see him on his pony as he scampers over the plain, you would think him wild and woolly, to be sure. But his heart is warm and tender when he sees a friend in need, though his education is but to endure. When the storm breaks in, its fury and the lightning's vivid flash makes you thank the Lord for shelter and for bed. Then it is he mounts his pony, and away you see him dash, no protection but the hat upon his head. Such is life upon a cow ranch, and the half was never towed, but you never find a kinder-hearted set. Then the cattleman at home, be he either young or old, he is a daisy from away back. Don't forget. When you fail to find a pony or a cow that's gone astray, be that cow or pony wild or be it tame, the cowboy, like the drummer, and the bedbug too, they say, brings him to you, for he gets there just the same. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Here's to the Ranger, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Annie Rue. Here's to the Ranger. He leaves his plow unfurrowed, he leaves his books unread, for a life of tented freedom by lure of danger led. He's first in the hour of peril, he's gayest in the dance, like the guardsman of old England or the beau sabreur of France. He stands our faithful bulwark against our savage foe, through lonely woodland places our children come and go, our flocks and herds untended, or hill and valley roam. The ranger in the saddle means peace for us at home. Behold our smiling farmsteads, where waves the golden grain, beneath yon tree earth's bosom was dark with crimson stain that bluff the death shot echoed of husband father slain god grant such sight of horror we never see again the gay and hardy ranger his blanket on the ground lies by the blazing campfire while song and tale goes round and if one voice is silent one fails to hear the jest they know his thoughts are absent with her who loves him best our state her sons confess it, that queenly star-crowned brow has darkened with the shadow of lawlessness ere now, and men of evil passions on her reproach have laid, but that the ready ranger rode promptly to her aid. 
he may not win the laurel nor trumpet tongue of fame but beauty smiles upon him and ranchmen bless his name then here's to the ranger past present and to come our safety from the savage the guardian of our home end of poem this recording is in the public domain Muster Out the Ranger, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Annie Rue. Muster Out the Ranger. Yes, muster them out, the valiant band that guards our western home. What matter to you in your eastern land if the raiders here should come? No danger that you shall awake at night to the howls of a savage band. So muster them out, though the morning light find havoc on every hand some dear one is sick and the horse is all gone so we can't for a doctor send the outlaws were in in the light of the morn and no rangers here to defend for they've mustered them out the brave true band untiring by night and day the fearless scouts of this borderland made taxes high they say have fewer men in the capital walls fewer tongues in the war of words but add to the rangers the living wall that keeps back the bandit hordes have fewer dinners less turtle soup if the taxes are too high there are many other and better ways to lower them if they try don't waste so much of your money printing speeches people don't read if you'd only take off what's used for that twould lower the taxes indeed don't use so much sugar and lemons cold water is just as good for a constant drink in the summer time and better for the blood but leave us the rangers to guard us still nor think that they cost too dear for their faithful watch over vale and hill gives our loved ones not to fear end of poem this recording is in the public domain a cow camp on the range collected by john lomax read for librivox dot org by phil Shamp oh the prairie dogs are screaming and the birds are on the wing see the heel fly chase the heifer boys tis the first class sign of spring the elm wood is budding the earth is turning green see the pretty things of nature that make life a pleasant dream i'm just living through the winter to enjoy the coming change for there is no place so homelike as a cow camp on the range the boss is smiling radiant radiant as the setting sun for he knows he's stealing glories for he ain't a cussin none the cook is at the chuck box whistlin heifers in the green making baking powder biscuits boys while the pot is biling beans the boys untie their bedding and unroll it on the run for they are in a monstrous hurry for the supper's almost done here's your bloody wolf bait cried the cook's familiar voice as he climbed the wagon wheel to watch the cowboys all rejoice then all thoughts were turned from reverence to a plate of beef and beans as we graze on beef and biscuits like yearlings on the range to the dickens with your city where they herd the brainless brats on a range so badly crowded there ain't room to cuss the cat this life is not so sumptuous i'm not longing for a change for there is no place so homelike as a cow camp on the range. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Freckles, a fragment, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. He was little, and peaked, and thin and nary a no-account horse least that's the way you'd describe him in case that the beast had been lost but for single and double cussedness and for double-fired sin the horse never came out of texas that was halfway knee-high to him the first time that ever i saw him was nineteen years ago last spring twas the year we had grasshoppers that come and et up everything that a feller rode up here one evening and wanted to pin overnight a small bunch of horses he said and i told him i guessed was all right well the feller was busted the horses was thin and the grass round here kind of good and he said if i'd let him hold here a few days he'd settle with me when he could so i told him all right 
turn them loose down the draw, that the latch string was always untied. He was welcome to stop a few days if he wished and rest from his weary ride. Well, the cuss stayed around for two or three weeks till at last he was ready to go, and that cuss out yonder being too poor to move, he gimme. The cuss had no dough. Well, at first the darn brute was as wild as a deer and would snort when he came to the branch and it took two cow-punchers on good horses too to handle him here at the ranch well the winter came on and the range had got hard and my mustang commenced to get thin so i fed him some and rode him around and found out old freckles was game for that was what the other cuss called him just freckles no more or no less his color couldn't describe it something like a paint shop in distress them was Indian times, young feller, that I am tellin' about. And off's the time I've seen the red man fight and put the boys to rout. A good horse in them days, young feller, would save your life. One that in any race could hold the pace when the redskin bands were rife. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Who's Old Cow? Collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Twas the end of Roundup, the last day of June, or maybe July, I don't remember, or it might have been August, twas some time ago, or perhaps twas the first of September. Anyhow, twas the Roundup we had at Mayu on the Lightning Rods Range near Cayo. There were some twenty wagons, more or less, camped about on the temporal in the canyon. First night we'd no cattle, so we only stood guard on the horses, somewhere near two hundred head. So we sidelined and hoppled and belled and we staked, loosed our hot rolls and fell into bed. Next morning, about daybreak, we started our work. Our horses, like possums, felt fine, each one tendin knittin', none trying to shirk. So the roundup got on in good time. Well, we worked for a week till the country was clean, and the bosses said, Now, boys, we'll stay here. We'll carve and we'll trim em and start out a herd up the east trail from old Abilene. Next morning all on herd, but two with the cut, and the boss on Paiute carving fine, till he rode down his horse and had to pull out, and a new man went in to clean up. Well, after each outfit had worked on the band, there was only three hundred of them left. When Nig Ad from LFD outfit rode in, a dictionary on earmarks and brands. He cut the two head out, told where they belonged. But when the last cow stood there alone, Ad's eyes bulged, so he didn't know just what to say. Septon, boss, there's something here monstrous wrong. White folks smarter and add, but maybe I's wrong. But here's six months' wages dat I'll give to anyone who'll tell me where I read dis mark, to who dis long-horned cow belong. Over slope in right ear and uh, under bill, left ear swaller fork and uh, under crop, hole punched in center and uh, jingle bob under half crop, and to slash and split. She's got O block and lightning rod, 946 and A bar 11, a terrapin and 97, rafter cross and a double fraud, half circle A and diamond D, four cross L and three PZ, B W I bar X V V, bar N cross and A L C. So if none of you punchers claims dis cow, Mr. Stock Association needn't get larmed, for one more brand more or less won't do no harm, so old nigger addle just brand her now. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Old Time Cowboy Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Old Time Cowboy Come all you melancholy folks, wherever you may be, 
I'll sing you about the cowboy whose life is light and free. He roams about the prairie, and at night when he lies down, his heart is as gay as the flowers in May in his bed upon the ground. They're a little bit rough, I must confess, the most of them at least. But if you do not hunt a quarrel, you can live with them in peace. For if you do, you're sure to rue the day you joined their band. They will follow you up and shoot it out with you just man to man. Did you ever go to a cowboy whenever hungry and dry, asking for a dollar and have him you deny? He'll just pull out his pocket book and hand you a note. They are the fellows to help you whenever you are broke. Go to their ranches and stay a while. They never ask a cent. And when they go to town, their money is freely spent. They walk straight up and take a drink, paying for every one, and they never ask your pardon for anything they've done. When they go to their dances, some dance while others pat. They ride their bucking broncos and wear their broad-brimmed hats. With their California saddles and their pants stuck in their boots, you can hear their spurs a-jingling and perhaps some of them shoots. Come all soft-hearted tender feet if you want to have some fun. Go live among the cowboys. They'll show you how it's done. They'll treat you like a prince, my boys. About them there's nothing mean. But don't try to give them too much advice, for all of them ain't green. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Recording by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Bucking Bronco, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Bucking Bronco. My love is a rider, wild broncos he breaks, though he's promised to quit it just for my sake. He ties up one foot, the saddle puts on, with a swing and a jump, he is mounted and gone. The first time I met him, twas early one spring, riding a bronco, a high-headed thing. He tipped me a wink, as he gaily did go, for he wished me to look at his bucking bronco. The next time I saw him, twas late in the fall, swinging the girls at Tomlinson's ball, he laughed and he talked as we danced to and fro, promised never to ride on another bronco. He made me some presents, among them a ring. The return that I made him was a far better thing. T'was a young maiden's heart, I'd have you all know. He's won it by riding his bucking bronco. My love has a gun, and that gun he can use. But he's quit his gun fighting, as well as his booze and he sold him his saddle, his spurs, and his rope, and there's no more cow punching, and that's what I hope. My love has a gun that has gone to the bad, which makes poor old Jimmy feel pretty damn sad, for the gun it shoots high, and the gun it shoots low, and it wobbles about like a bucking bronco. Now all you young maidens, where'er you reside, beware the cowboy who swings the raw hide he'll court you and pet you and leave you and go in the spring up the trail on his bucking bronco and a poem this recording is in the public domain